So moving on to the next question. That is regarding class knife, spasticity, cogwheel rigidity and all. So what is class knife phenomenon or class knife spasticity? So spasticity and rigidity is something that we get in um, hyper when the muscles are hypertonic that is in pyramidal tract lesions or extra pyramidal tract lesions usually we get a uh, spasticity in a pyramidal tract lesions and rigidity in extra pyramidal tract lesions so spasticity means uh, when we if we are considering the flexion of the elbow during the initial phases of flexion there will be resistance and during the later stages the resistance will go off and we will be able to flex the arm very without any kind of resistance so that is spasticity so there will be initial resistance to passing movements and then in rigidity what happens is we have two types of rigidity lead pipe rigidity cogwheel rigidity and all in lead pipe rigidity we have the resistance throughout the motion uh, or throughout the um, flexion and then the cogwheel rigidity means you don't have resistance throughout you have catches in between so that is cogwheel type of rigidity so these are uh, usually seen in extra pyramidal tract involvement and usually seen in Parkinsonism and all. So why you get a spasticity? That is the question or class knife phenomenon. That is initial resistance followed by uh, a loss of uh, resistance at all. And so that is because of something known as stretch reflex followed by an inverse stretch reflex that is happening. So for that what is a stretch reflex? So stretch reflex is simply uh, when you elicit a deep tendon reflex like a knee jerk and all. What happens is when you are tapping the patellar tendon you are actually stretching that muscle. So the stretch is the stimulus that you are giving. And the receptor that senses the stimulus is the muscle spindle that is present in the muscle. So here in a knee jerk, the muscle that is concerned is the uh, quadriceps muscle. So when you are stretching it, stretching the patellar tendon, the muscle spindle is getting activated and it is sending the afferent uh, fibers to the spinal cord. And then from the spinal cord, we have the efferents that is the alpha motor neurons going into the muscle which makes the muscle contract so in response to a stretch stimulus you have the response as the muscle contraction because of this stretch reflex and you have something known as alpha gamma coactivation that is whenever the alpha motor neurons are getting activated something known as the gamma motor neurons can also get activated so this gamma motor neurons what they do is they are actually efferents to the muscle spindle And this gamma activation leads to continuous um, discharges from this muscle spindles and you get a continuous afferent uh, discharges impulses going on and again the alpha motor neurons are getting activated the muscle will show contraction so you have a 
maintained contraction because of this gamma coactivation and so that is why during the initial uh, flexion of the elbow you get the resistance it is because of this stretch reflex that is happening because when you flex the elbow the tendon of the triceps is actually getting stretched and in all and to that the triceps is uh, giving a contractile response so um, in hypertonia like when you have spasticity or rigidity and all what happens is this alpha fibers they will be more active and the gamma alpha gamma coactivation is also more so because of that you get an increased uh, contractile response and that is reason for that initial resistance followed by there is the resistance goes off later so why it is happening is because of inverse stretch reflex that is taking place thereafter in during inverse stretch reflex what happens is uh, when you when the muscle has contracted for a period of time the tension builds up and then it goes in for a inverse stretch reflex so inverse stretch reflex is just opposite to a stretch reflex that is to a stretch the response of the muscle will be relaxation so when the uh, triceps get further stretched then instead of a contraction response it goes off goes into a relaxation response and that's why we uh, get a loss of resistance in the later stages of that flexion so and about cogwheel rigidity that is you have resistance throughout the motion plus catches in between so that is happening because of hypertonia rigidity plus tremor being superimposed so that is why you are getting resistance throughout and with catches in between